We are pleased to be joined now by the head coach of the Orange, uh, Adrian Autry. I, f- I feel like we just saw each other, Coach. Uh, we did uh, last night at Destiny. I guess let's start with that. I, I, how much do you enjoy doing events like that, getting out in the public and meeting the fans and, you know, having a chance to, you know, answer some of their questions? Oh, I, love, I love those events. I think it's great, um, especially – you know, we're kind of going into the community and not the community coming to us like it usually is. So to get a chance to go kind of into the community, uh, hear their questions, um, it's refreshing. Um, I actually got <clears throat> I got some photo pictures from a, from a fan of what we need to do to rebound. So, you know, it's always <laughs> it's always good to hear the community. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you that, Coach. What, what is it like to hear fans that, like, actually, like, break, like, the fans are that invested that they're breaking down rebounding, and another kid had all your stats, and he was right. all, all your stats. Had the free throw numbers, yeah. the three-point yeah. shooting like, numbers. You know, yeah. What is that like as a coach? To be like, there's, there's people that invested in what you do for a living. Well, if they have my numbers and my stats, then I'm really impressed, and I'm, I'm, I'm honored because you know? I, I don't play anymore. But I think it just really speaks to the val- – it just really speaks to our community and how they embrace us and how they support us. And when we talk to our recruits and our, and our players uh, through the recruiting process, we always talk about that. All right, let's jump into some basketball now. And you're coming off a, a good win. And, you know, people look at Cornell and they say, well, it was quote-unquote just Cornell. So the 7-1 and one Cornell team, uh, it's a team that is is likely going to be an NCAA tournament team. I think we could say the same thing about Colgate. You played two teams that are going to be uh, certainly, uh, you know, major players in their conferences. Um, and, and you played well and you, you ended up with a, a double-digit win. I guess just your thoughts and your takeaways from that win on Tuesday. Well, you know, um, you know, I wasn't pleased with some, you know, a majority of some of the stuff, but you know, we're getting it's still a young seat, still young in the, into the season, and um, you know, we we showed some resilience, we overcame some stuff. Um, they they missed some shots that they normally make, uh, and they and 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 so we got to work on that. But they they got it close, and we resp- and we responded. And anytime you can have a game like that against a team like that and, and come out with a victory and, you know, your best player um, and your important bench player sit out for six or seven minute stretch and they make that comeback to be able to hold on and kind of keep the lead. You know, that, that that's just nothing but confidence for, for the rest of our team and keep we got to build on that. Coach, you know, I said yesterday it's frustrating watching this team sometimes because Colgate gets shots uh, or Cornell gets shots off at a rapid pace. And then the last, I mean, you you needed to do it, but the last few minutes, they couldn't get a shot off when you guys were playing defense down the stretch when you needed it. How do you get the team to buy in to do that every time you you're on defense? You know what? That's what I'm, that's what we're working on every day. We talk about um, springing together consistency. So we're trying to break it down. I think people have heard this before, but we try to break it down into four minutes. And I think that's more, you know, we can have that same intensity for four minutes and then another four minutes and kind of keep building on that. Um, again, because we, we do – um, play defense and, and spurts, and we got to get more consistent with that. And when we when we when we really lock in, we're a pretty good defensive team. So you, you said that you weren't thrilled with everything that happened on Tuesday. I mean, you know, the foul trouble. You mentioned that. Um, what, what were you know? Give me a list of some of the things that you didn't like. Some of the things maybe you're working on as you get ready for this Georgetown game. Well, we got to we got to be better at communicating, um, talking to each other, especially on the defensive end, um, and being able to be a little bit more active, um, and, uh, and and keeping people, you know, pushing people out further. And, and then rebounding, you know, rebounding is, is not just one person, especially in man-to-man, you know, it, it's it's all five guys. And I know that our guards are more than capable of doing it, and our perimeter guys, it's not just our guards. It's not just the big men. It's just not Naheem. It's just not just Malik. Um, um, you know, so I think we got to get all five guys rebounding. And, and we've done better, and we have done better since we've come back from uh, Maui. But we got to continue to do that, and we got to, you know, rebound, and, and play defense consistently. I was listening to our post-game call-in show on the way home, and you Brit mentioned Naheem. You know what? What do you see out of him? And is is he doing things? You know, it's hard to ask, but like, is he doing what you want out of him? Because the fans seem to be thinking that just because he's a giant, that he, he <laughs> should, nobody should get shots off, and he should be scoring every time he gets the ball. Yeah, I think that's unrealistic. I think you know. Um, 
you know, the reality is um, when you play certain these certain teams like Cornell and Colgate, those teams are just, you know, Colgate, depending on the lineup that they had in, that was a good fit for him. Um, Cornell in particular, last the last game we played, they, they just had their big guys were 6'8", 6'9", that all can shoot the ball extremely well from the three-point line. And, you know, he's just not comfortable defending out there the whole game, you know, um, so – a lot of that has to do with that. But I think he's – if you look at his numbers and you, you know, for long stretches when he was in Maui, he was you know, he was really productive, you know, I mean, rebounding his blocks. And his rebounds are offensive rebounds. Um, so, uh, you know, he gets us a couple of extra possessions. Again, I, I, I want to play him more. Um, but, you know, for him, it depends that the matchup sometimes just doesn't work in his favor. But I'm, I'm pleased with what he's doing right now. And he can give us more because he's very talented. Um, but a lot of that, you know, I think some of that has to do with the matchups and some of that has to do with, you know, us trying to get, you know, getting him to do a little bit more. Adrian Autry joining us here on Orange Nation for another few minutes. And, uh, Coach, you know, a popular a popular question that we get, uh, you know, it seems like every show somebody's asking about Benny. What's going on with Benny? I, I know it's a sensitive subject, uh, but can you share anything about the situation with Benny Williams? Did not play the other night, and, you know, you said coach's decision. Is there anything you can share with the fans and the listeners about what's going on with him? I mean, I think at the end of the day, um, you know, it was, you know, like I said, coach's decision and um, you try to, you know, just, there's it's really not much to talk about. Um, you know, he's still here. He's still on the team. Um, I just, you know, like I said, I, I, it was just coach's decision. I'm not going to comment any further on that. Um, but, you know, we, we're just getting prepared for Georgetown right now. And that's, that's everybody, the whole team pushing forward for, to that game. I, uh, I did ask you this last night uh, at Destiny about Georgetown. I said, uh, does this one mean a little bit more to you? You know, a lot of times coaches will say they all count the same, they all mean the same, but uh, knowing your history with Georgetown and SU's history with, with this program, uh, you you admit that this one does mean a little bit more to you personally, correct? Yeah, I think it, it definitely uh, um, means a little bit more to me and by my coaching staff. And, again, these guys, my, my players now – they, the one thing I do, they love to play, so it, it means something to them. Just game, and we have a couple of guys that are, you know, from the area, so they're gonna they, they're gonna be ready to go anyway. But I, I think I got to give them a little bit of context, you know. That's just, you know, I typically try to stay away from that, but you know, I just want them to have a understanding of, you know, this 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 game has some significance to the fan base. Uh, it's a rivalry that, you know, we 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 maintained, and, and we and it means a lot to both both schools and uh you know so i just want them to be prepared and understand what they're gonna walk into on saturday i i don't know if you remember this but a couple years ago at the in the lobby in washington you yelled at me it's still a rivalry because (laughs) uh (laughs) <laughs> because it it is the, the players don't know like like we asked last night like you have to explain to them is this something you want to keep going forward with as head coach? Oh yeah, I love this I love this game um, especially now um, you know Ed Cooley's over there and he's doing a phenomenal job and he will do a phenomenal job and I think uh, you know I think it will you know I think as we both kind of restore our place and, and elevate our programs I think this will become you know, more not just outside of our communities, it would be more of a national rivalry. And I think we can build that back up again. You mentioned uh, the coaching change there at uh, at Georgetown. Ed Cooley coming over from Providence, and now the head coach of the Hoyas. It's a five and three team that that you'll see uh, on Saturday. Uh, what, what can you tell us about this particular Georgetown squad? And what do you what are you expecting to see come Saturday afternoon? Well, I tell you what, that record doesn't indicate the talent that they have, and I know they just added a couple of people that were missing. So I think you know some of those those uh, losses early was due to that they weren't full. I got a chance to watch the TCU game, and they were phenomenal. I mean. And they battle back, you know, guys that can shoot. They got great guard play. They got some physicality. You know, you wouldn't expect anything else um, from an Ed Cooley coach team. They're tough. You know, they fight. And, uh, you know, we're going to be in a battle. You know, Coach, uh, I got one last one for you. We, we asked you about Benny Williams, but Chris Bell and Justin Taylor have played great, right? It, 
in his place. Like Bell's been shooting great and Taylor's been getting rebounding. Can you talk about their play? I think Chris and Justin um, have, have, have been really good for us. Um, they, they, they're two guys that, that opens up the defense. You know, they can make shots, and, and when they're making shots, um, you know, it just, you know, it bonds well for us. But they, you know, Chris is improving defensively. Justin is really rebounding the ball at a high level, and, you know, and I think he, he, he battles, and, you know, I know people keep saying, hey, he's at the three, he's at the four. He's a basketball player, and that's where we're at um, in today's, where you put, you know, you put the best unit together that works together, that addresses everything that you need. You need shooting, so you need spacing. You need guys that can attack and create you need some physicality so I think you know the versatility of our team you know is 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 why I'm excited about us continually getting better and, and, and going further but Justin and Chris you know they they are important pieces for us to be successful because of their ability offensively and now defensively they're picking it up you know Chris is fast you know he, he blocks shots um, you know he's improving on keeping the ball you know when, when the ball is away from him and JT he always gives you everything he has he He's physical. You know, he has a good understanding and feel of what we're doing. Um, a lot of the stuff that he does may go, may not show up in the stats. Just because he's not shooting well doesn't mean he's not playing well. And I talked to him about that as well um, because he, he, he demands attention. And that helps it. That makes it easier for the, the rest of the guys out there. All right. Uh, coming off a big win against Cornell on Tuesday. Uh, Coach, best of luck keeping it going against Georgetown on Saturday. We appreciate the time. Thank you, guys. All right, Adrian Autry joining us here on the show as he does uh, every week throughout the college basketball season. Yes, it's brought to you by Oswego County Mutual and Labatt. All right, and with that, uh, we will take a timeout. 315-437-7644. We're going to switch gears on the other side. We're going to talk Bills football with our good friend Thad Brown from WROC in Rochester. Back after this on ESPN Radio. 